Hello and welcome to the Share It With Ishani podcast and I am Ishani Gupta, radio anchor and a public speaking coach. Here's a reminder, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I bring one episode of my podcast every single Saturday. Today I have my best friend on my podcast so i'm very excited for this particular episode because it is going to be laden with a lot of fun as well as a lot of educational stuff because she is from jnu new delhi so in this episode we are going to learn some communication tips from her because she is a researcher and she has to present a lot of papers a lot of presentations we are going to have two segments of this podcast with pg because we have a lot to share with you a lot of valuable stuff so in the first segment we are going to talk about how you can overcome your fears of public speaking with pc sharing her own personal experience and then in the second part we are going to talk about how communication skills effective public speaking skills can be used in research so please welcome pc sharma hi pc how Hello, are you doing Hi Shani I'm good. Uh thank you for having me and thank you for giving me a platform to share my views. I don't think that I have achieved something great in my life but whatever I have I would like to share my journey and my experience. You are being very humble but seriously she is a topper. She has been a topper throughout her life during my college days. So I know she is a really brilliant student. and that she has a lot to share on communication tips because i know our professors know that she has been a really great communicator so how has been your experience as a communicator during your research phase just when you started with your phd and higher study can you share that with us uh yeah so uh, as you know that as a researcher we have a lot to present so uh, even during mphil even during your masters there are term papers so we are supposed to present we have to be supposed to make presentations so it doesn't matter how much you how much effort you put in the writing but it also matters how you are presenting so whenever uh, whenever we were given a topic we were supposed to give a 5 to 10 minute presentation during masters it started during masters uh, then we were gradually improving during our mphil and during the phd so uh, presentations are a continuous part of the evaluation process in uh, in higher studies so it started with uh, like if you if you can recall then during our graduation years yeah. also we were supposed to make presentations uh, for every subject yeah so presentations have been a fundamental part of of this journey of higher studies after getting to higher studies you have to make sure that you stand in front of a class and you deliver as you go higher up the ladder during mphil and phd you are not just presenting in front of a class but you are also presenting in front of teachers it, 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 like there are 10 to 12 teachers sitting in front of you, you are like you are giving a viva so it's the intimidating experience in the first go but eventually you just become comfortable presenting i still remember my first presentation it was a horror a complete disaster and it was during my first year yeah you might remember i was giving uh, with one of our friends and we were doing it in a joint way and our professors were sitting in front of us <laughs> yes, and there was yeah there was a huge mistake and i was shivering because that was my first ever presentation in life and i had no experience whatsoever of giving a presentation and that was a complete disaster but yes eventually i learned from those mistakes and grew over time and improved myself i would say that's so that's the thing that i think most of us can relate our first presentations are most of the time terrible uh, but it is somewhere we get a start somewhere we realize that this is the way we should be doing so i think this is the good thing about all of us that we try to in respect try to self introspect and see where we went wrong and that's how yeah. we improve if we don't realize our mistakes i think nothing is going to change and we will continue doing the same thing in the uh, in most of present most of the presentations that we make even later yeah yeah that is a very good point you made it uh, we 
should not just get you know disturbed and saddened by what has happened wrong but instead we should strive to eliminate those mistakes and become an improved version of ourselves yeah you see i met you during our graduation days in college but how were you in your childhood just for oh, our you. viewers because i know i know a little about your childhood but Uh, as a communicator or how was your experience with presenting and all of that in your childhood okay uh, so i think this is the most difficult part for me to go back and revisit in my childhood because i feel that that was the darkest part of my whole life <laughs> i existed like a shy child uh, i was a very shy kid i barely used to talk to people in school and i was overweight i used to wear a spectacle and i used to make the ponies my hair were always oil terribly my mother took care of my hair uh, so i was a very i would describe myself as an underconfident child all during my school life uh, things started gradually changing after 10th uh, in 11th and 12th i started realizing that i can improve my personality if i put in effort but other than that i was i describe myself as a very underconfident child uh i and as far as speaking skill is concerned i always used to think that i'm a good writer i have a good writing skill so whenever i'll be given an opportunity i'm going to do well so uh i was always uh i was good academically but in extracurricular activities i was an average student uh, i mean my my mother believed that uh, you can't balance both things either you can be good in the extracurriculars or you can be good with the academics so I won't blame her because that is the mentality that most parents share. Absolutely. So uh, whether it was a debate competition or it was a dance, music, and stuff like that, my mother always encouraged me to uh, take care of the academics and leave this behind. Therefore, I I become I became even more a shy child, um, set up in a cocoon, who was bookworm, and I was I was able to deliver on paper, but I was not able to deliver in person. so whenever we had a debate competition or something i felt that what if i could write the uh, text and someone else could deliver it maybe that would be a wonderful combination so that never worked out but uh, seriously i feel that if i were more active during my uh, school days then probably i would have been even better than what i am now yeah that is actually a myth some people feel that if, if they are good writers even i i felt the same i was a good writer too i i scored really good really well in my english test exams in any creative writing stuff but when it came to speaking during my school days i too was absolutely like you <laughs> i wanted somebody else to present i was i always shied away from standing up and speaking up in front of people so but that is a myth so, if you are a good writer you need not be a good speaker speaking is altogether a different skill which you need to to practice so uh, i if i could recall from my school days there was one event that i describe as a major turning point in my life so um, you know we remember the dark things and we remember the most happy so this is a dark thing that i remember uh, i think at that point of time i was i couldn't make sense out of it but today when i look back i know that what hurt me and what changed me so i would like to share that uh, uh, you know as i told that i was always a good writer and i thought that i just needed a nudge if someone would encourage me to participate then probably i would i would do really really well i was never given that sort of opportunity because teachers try teachers in schools they identify people who have certain soft skills like they have a good personality they have a good uh, communication skill only then they are highlighted and there are certain students who are teachers favorite i was never like that so um, i was no ever never encouraged by my teachers to participate in something but um, i think a major event happened during 8th or 9th grade when we had a event called the parliament in our school. and my history teacher encouraged me to participate so there were there were many participants i would say that it was a very big thing but it was a very big thing for me like if even if 200 people were participating i could participate and that was sort of an achievement for me. 
I was given a very short role, just three lines to speak. But I was happy that at least um, I can just break up the cocoon and I can try my skills, my speaking skills. Mm-hmm. So uh, she gave me questions like in Parliament you have question and answer session. So mm-hmm. I was given a question set for the three line question. Um, I was very excited that you know this is the first time I'm participating. This, this is the first time I'll be on stage, so I'm going to give my best. I kept rehearsing those three lines like a parrot. Mm-hmm. I just crammed them those three lines, and uh, I felt that okay, I have done a good cramming now. Now I can deliver. So I just uh, went to my teacher, uh, very yeah. excited, and I said that now I want to practice these three lines with you, so that if I'm going wrong, you can help me with some amends. So I went to the staff room, and that was the mistake that I made. <laughs> <laughs> I went to talk to the teacher personally. So uh, what happened was I went to the classroom and I I delivered. So as a parrot I started speaking. You know when you cram you speak like a parrot. Also. So um, my teacher she kept listening and I I, I repeated that two three times. <laughs> so she didn't give any reaction. But there was an English teacher sitting there. She was checking her paper. She stopped in between and she said, you know how are you sounding? You're sounding like a uh, like a hawker selling on the radio station. And that that uh, that dented my confidence so much that I threw the paper and I just felt then that I'm not going to participate. Um, so I think that was that was hurtful because a teacher shouldn't talk to a student like that. A, B, yeah. if she wanted to uh, criticize, then she should have suggested some changes, which she didn't. Yeah. So all my life, I hated that teacher. I hated I hated <laughs> everyone who felt. Overconfident about being good with English. Uh, I mean, English is not a, a not a super skill set that you possess. It is just a medium of exchange, mm. and no one has the right to to uh, make someone feel inferior just because of their English speaking skills. So I think um, that was a very major event because that made me even under more underconfident, and I always felt that I will not be able to face people. I will not be able to go on stage. Um, But somewhere I also decided that you know how can someone uh, how can someone dent me like this how can someone dent my confidence like this so I had this thing in my mind that I'm going to change I'm going to improve my personality and mm. I'm going to uh, overcome the hurdles I'm going to overcome whatever I'm so I think I did a quite a lot of introspection I was quite quite uh, young during that time I was probably. Well, thirteen-year-old way, but I I felt that you know speaking is not only about writing. Speaking is not only about delivery. It's about yeah. your overall personality. So, so if yeah. you feel confident about how you look, how you speak, what you speak, it is a combination of all these things that make you a good speaker. Absolutely. So I mean, I said that you know speaking is not a, a thing that you can. Some some people actually get it. They acquire it from their parents. They acquire it from people around. Them. But uh, most of us, we learn this skill. Yes. And I think the role of teacher is immense in this. A teacher can make you or break you. Absolutely. So I think that was broken. It was. It was on me to use it constructively or destructively. Yes. So I think uh, training, coaching, these things can help, and no one should shy away from taking help. Absolutely, absolutely. So Keeti has shared a wonderful story, and I would like to tell my viewers that pay attention to this. It is not just you. If you feel very uncon unconfident and underconfident today, please don't be disheartened because you can if you decide to. That is the message that Keeti is giving. Even though. Uh, there were people who tried to dent her confidence levels by telling that she was not good enough, but she did not. She did not take it uh, in a destructive way, but rather in a constructive way. She decided that she is going to change her personality. She is going to improve upon her speaking skills. She is going to take some action and make some improvements in her uh, speaking skills and overall personality. So. This is the step that we need to do, and obviously there is help out there. If you need help in doing so, then definitely seek 
help out there. There are so many people out there ready to give you a hand. All right. Thanks okay. a lot. Too. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, that it helped. So what I did is I uh, I reached out to my brother and I shared that you know uh, because he he was an engineer and he told me that he was on making presentations the part of his uh, work. So I I used to talk to him and I used to just indirectly like not directly I don't want to reflect uh, that I'm an underconfident person but I I just said that would you do the presentation what are the skills that you should have. So he used to tell me that you know you have to prepare a presentation. You should practice in front of a mirror. Um, you should uh, uh, you should think from the listener's point of view also whether what you are yes. saying is making sense to them or not. And you know he suggested me a very absurd uh, technique. So I just share it. It's very super to try it now. <laughs> so he said that uh, if you want to improve on your English, you should. You should, you know, you should just call a call center. You should uh, like bank <laughs> why and all, um, or customer care, and just talk to them random. <laughs> you just go on, brag anything, speak to them rudely, do anything. Even <laughs> even <laughs> engaging yourself, even communicate. So, uh, I think that's very stupid, but I tried yeah. that for two three times. I I guess most of us have at least done this once or twice. Calling up uh, the call center, yes, even I did this when I was. <laughs> I would one. call a call center. I would call up these the uh, DPOs only for this. That for this stretch of time, I'm going to engage with someone who is going to communicate. <laughs> that's fun, but that's how we learn. These are the very basic things, not the advanced levels. Like, if you really want to start somewhere, then then you can basically. If you want to just get out of your fears and take that first step, then <laughs> then yes, people suggest. But of course, these are not the techniques that I teach That's in my coaching. Yeah, these are a few things that we do because <laughs> it is suggested. Dubai, Dubai, love Dubai. <laughs> I think that that's okay, but I won't suggest anyone to do that. Yeah. So yeah, are you guys enjoying this? Maybe my brother, this? <laughs> my brother right. also took it mockingly, but I was serious because I wanted mm-hmm. someone to talk, mm-hmm. and at my home I couldn't get anyone who could talk to me in English. So how did you overcome all those challenges and uh, finally? Use the lessons that you have you had learned during your school days and the steps that you have taken to improve upon yourself and present uh, in later years like graduation years and above. Yeah, yeah. So um, as I told, that school was a terrible experience, but graduation was a very I think that was the golden years of life because. Miranda House groomed our personalities. We have to agree that Miranda House made us the women we are today. Yes, absolutely. So three cheers to Miranda House. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So I think um, the the most amazing thing about college life is that you uh, do not get to learn only from your teachers, but you also get to learn from your people. You are always surrounded with people who are, are doing better than you. You are put up in a positive competition with them. And uh, colleges have a very beautiful thing that they encourage everyone to participate. So we were forced to give present. We dreaded that, but that forceful presentations they have made us a, a more confident person. So I think yes. uh, that, that really needs to be appreciated. Miranda House has yeah. been. I, I give all the credits to Miranda House for whoever I am today. Absolutely, like Delhi University. Because that is basically the system that is in place in the entire Delhi University, and uh, obviously our teachers, our professors in Miranda House, they have guided us throughout. So I would say that the system that they had in place, that we had to give presentations no matter what, and we had so many different papers, and we had to prepare for presentation almost every every month. I like I don't remember completely, but yes. It was that frequent. We had to prepare a presentation and deliver in front of the people, students and uh, our professors. Yes, so that has been a really great uh, way of learning. I would say, yeah. 
तो माय फर्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन इन कॉलेज वाज अ टेरिफाइंग एक्सपीरियंस माय हैंड्स वर शिवरिंग एंड माय पाम्स वर स्वेट अ आई वुड तो आई थिंक आई वुड हैव आल्सो स्टैमर्ड मेबी बट अम बट आई वाज एप्रिशिएटेड आई मीन द टीचर्स वर वेरी एनकरेजिंग एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम एंड द स्टूडेंट्स वर आल्सो वेरी एनकरेजिंग सो दैट दैट हेल्प मी ओवरकम द the negative mindset that that had set in during my school days so i realized that if i work upon myself then i'm going to overcome these challenges and do it very well so i think um, encouragement from a good teacher it really helps yeah and we were fortunate to have a to have such a such a college life or such a college where we could learn from our peers where we could yeah from our personality but there are certain people who are not as fortunate uh, mm-hmm. even now during the covid years where uh, students are attending online classes and it's more one to one i mean it's more one sided i mean the teacher is delivering the lecture and the students are only listening um, mm-hmm. there is a very huge gap in in uh, in the skills that we have learned they will miss this period the two yes. years of their life like, they have lost not interacting with the peers not interacting in the class that is so, true so uh, i think if you uh, i would like to talk about a course that you are offering so if a student gets to engage maybe in, in your group there are certain there are yeah. people a larger group so yeah. i think benefit from that they can benefit from the team work they can benefit from being a part of a group that is oriented towards improving their skills definitely definitely that is why i i have my course and it is basically to help everyone gain that skill yeah because it matters that you are put up in a environment where you are learning you cannot sit at your home alone and think that you can uh, you can be a good speaker you have to learn from people around you you have to compete in a positive sense and at the same time you also have to learn the team skills which are equally important for your presentation absolutely and uh, this covid time the thing that you have just mentioned i i would like to share the story where we would sit in the first bench <laughs> we used to be very studious kinds we would be sitting in the front bench and always asking questions to the teachers to the professors and that is how we learn basically you know taking one step at a time and these are the very small things like taking the initiative to ask even asking a question even a, a very small thing like asking a question can uh, help you with uh, you know overcoming your fears because most of us are even scared of asking questions i was during my school days i was very scared but because i had kirti with me <laughs> yeah so you know Uh, teachers in JNU and teachers elsewhere also they 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 say that kids do ask so many questions. <laughs> so I think uh, we have this fear that if we are going to ask a stupid question, people will make fun out of us. So uh, that is the I think that is the first step towards becoming a good speaker. Yes, you have to question like that. Don't don't give a damn about what others are thinking. Yes, just you know, asking question is also speaking your mind. So once you learn speaking out of uh, out whatever is going on in your head, then you are you know, one step. You are you have taken one step towards being a good public speaker. Absolutely. So because I had TG with me, I was I got that confidence of asking questions, <laughs> and she used to ask, and so did I. So we both were question asking machines. <laughs> So this is how we were in our college days, basically, and uh, together we supported each other and uh, improved upon ourselves. Okay, so now we move on from graduation days to her MPhil and PhD days. So how has your experience been in JNU? So you have been in JNU for so many years since your uh, MA days. <laughs> so please, 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 please tell us, yes. Uh, yeah, so JNU was a completely different experience. So if I could divide my life, then the first phase is my student life, the second phase is my graduation, and the third phase is the JNU life. So JNU was a very different experience. 
in Miranda House, we had a certain mindset that uh, English is important. How you dress is important. How you present yourself, uh, your soft skills matter. But uh, JNU was a wake up call in the sense that uh, they were most humble looking people from very, very humble backgrounds. They would dress very simply. Uh, as you know, JNU is known for that chula and that good <laughs> Yeah. So um, that was a very liberating experience for me because I could shed that. I could shed that uh, attachment with English that I hated all my life. But I never realized that I was also becoming a part of it. So I felt that what matters is not how you're dressed. What matters is not what is your background. What matters is how much you are ready to put in efforts in yourself. Uh, how much dreams you can how, how far can you dream and how hard can you work to achieve those things? Mm. So I think uh, that we all have that tendency that we make our identity a very important part of uh, what we should become. Uh, so if, if my father is a politician, I think that okay, I can be a politician. So we don't think beyond that. We have certain fixation with that idea. Uh, but here, as soon as I came, there were people who were sons and daughters of farmers, not farmers, mm-hmm. agricultural laborers. So they would hardly make, uh, they, they were daily wage workers. They were became so mm-hmm. humble back now. Um, so I just learned one thing that, you know, if you if you are ready to, to put in hard work, then you can do anything. I have my friends who are today uh, serving in administrative positions in various districts. So they started from the scratch, literally, during the masters. Uh, can you imagine that uh, in masters, you are supposed to start from scratch. You are supposed to sit with a computer for the first time in your life. You are supposed to make presentations to people who are from top universities. So uh, that was a very, very liberating experience. And wow. the, the uh, attachment with the identity. Like mm-hmm. I used to think that I am a Delhi University student, so I'm going to outperform all of them. So that uh, that sort of attachment we have with our identities, based on our caste, based on our gender, uh, based yeah. on our background, that that has got completely removed. And today I feel that I am only a self-made human being. What um, matters is not what I've learned from my father or my mother. Uh, doesn't matter what they are, but what matters is how much hard work I can put in, how much I can learn from people around me and that is what makes it. nothing more than that nothing is a barrier your identity is not a barrier wow such a powerful message such a powerful message thanks a lot for sharing this because so many of us are are we are our own biggest critiques i would say and we would hold ourselves back just for uh, a very minute things, very idiotic things like these like, I have this background, I cannot speak English and so many other things. I don't have a, a good dressing sense or I am too fat or I am uh, I'm too ugly. <laughs> so many, we have so many limitations in our minds, there's so many thoughts that are holding us back. But trust me, nothing matters. It is. These limitations are only in our head. These are actually only in our head. Absolutely. There is nothing that is limiting. Absolutely. Everything has been created by us in our minds and only we can get out of it just by telling ourselves. We are the ones we have to do that thing to break that mindset and come out of it. We are so holding ourselves. Like the, yeah. uh, so my supervisor says this very amazing thing. She says that you should not look at what you don't have. Look at what you have and make the most out of it. So this yeah. is equally applicable to your speaking skills also. Don't try to think about all the hindrances, your identity-based, your background-based hindrances. Just look at the positive points about it. Yeah. And just make sure that you're going to overcome that no matter what. And seek help. Don't suffer alone. Seek help. I mean, uh, if you think that there is an elder brother, there is an elder sister who could help you, try to do that. If you think that you need a proper coaching, you need a, you need a training, then go ahead with that. Don't yes. feel shy, don't feel hesitant. Absolutely. 
so there is help always seek out help and you are no less than anybody else don't ever think of yourself in that way because we all have this tendency of criticizing ourselves so nothing is stopping you okay just take that one step just don't think about that you are not good enough even if you are not you will be one day so you just need to take that one step yes okay so on that note we come to the end of this particular segment with kirti and stay tuned for the second segment where we will talk about how communication skills can be used in research